to my channel. Today I'm doing my October wrap up um, and October was definitely a bit of a mixed bag when it came to uh, the books that I read. Uh, my ratings were all over the place from two stars to five stars. Um, I read 10 books altogether which is not bad. Uh, but most of the books uh, I actually read for Smodathon, uh, which took place during the final week of October. So in this video I'm actually not going to talk about a whole lot of books because, I mean, I already have a whole blog dedicated to Smodathon, so if you want to hear more thoughts about the books that I read, uh, go watch that blog. Um, I'm just going to mention those books really quickly here. And the book that I spent by far the most time on in October, I'm not even going to talk about here because I didn't finish it in October. So that one will have to wait until my November wrap up. So a bit of a weird reading month in a way, but yeah, let's just go through the books that I read and also wrap up my bookish bingo round for October. Uh, the first prompt that I got for bookish bingo was to read an ebook. And for this prompt, I read Introducing Mr. Winterborn by Joanna Chambers. Uh, this is one of the books that I ended up reading for Smodathon, uh, so I'm not going to go into it here. It was a really short uh, historical romance novella. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I ended up giving it four stars, and I'm excited to read more of this series. The next prompt that I got was Wildcard, and for this I decided to read No Exit by Taylor Adams. Uh, this is a thriller about a woman who is driving home to her family for Christmas. Um, she just learned that her mother is seriously ill, so that's why she's going. And on her drive there's suddenly this blizzard and she has to basically stop driving and she ends up stuck in this rest stop together with like a small group of other people. And then after a while she discovers that inside one of the cars parked outside the rest stop building there is a child being held captive and that's basically the premise of this book. Um, I definitely think that this is a case of it's not the book it's me because this book just really wasn't my thing. The premise sounded interesting, which is why I wanted to read this book. Uh, but I was kind of hoping it would be more of a mystery, like figuring out who done it kind of thing. Uh, that really wasn't what this was at all. It was more about this woman kind of trying to um, survive, I guess, without giving too much away. So I think this is probably a good book if you like that kind of thing. Like it's difficult to tell because I really just didn't like this. And at this point I'm kind of wondering if I should just give up on thrillers altogether because I never seem to really enjoy them. I mean, there are some that I enjoy, but most of the time I feel like I gave, gave them like low or mediocre ratings. Um, but yeah, I had some hopes for this one, I guess, which is one of the reasons I decided to pick it up, but just it didn't work for me. I didn't find it enjoyable. Um, it's pretty action-packed if you like that kind of thing, but like... Yeah, just not my type of book. I ended up giving it two stars. Just didn't quite work for me. The next prompt that I got for Bookish Bingo was Romance. And for this prompt I read Equinox by Charlie Godwine. Uh, this is a pretty different book. It's a magical realism type of book, I want to say. Um, it's set in Vienna in Austria and it's basically about a guy who wakes up naked in a park one day uh, and he's unable to remember anything of his past. And like I said, this is very different and very unique. It talks a lot about like spirituality and religion. Um, and for me as a non-religious reader, I really appreciated that it wasn't really about like one religion in particular. It was more about like all of the characters in this book seem to kind of believe in different things so it was more about like believing in something rather than believing in like one particular religion or belief. I'll admit that the book lost me a little bit at times with all the religious uh, stuff. Uh, not because I'm not religious but more because there was just stuff that just went over my head. I wasn't quite able to understand it I guess. I picked this book for the prompt uh, romance and while there was a romance storyline in here I'm not sure I would really call this book a romance because I didn't feel like that was the main focus of the story. It felt more like a important subplot in a way. 
The setting and the atmosphere I really think was one of the strongest part of this book. Uh, this book is actually set during fall, which I didn't know going into it. So reading it in October while it was getting colder outside was just perfect. Uh, it talks a lot about like harvest and nature and the setting just like came alive through the pages I felt like. like that was really well done I thought. I haven't read a lot of magical realism so I don't really have much to compare this to. And I have been a little bit back and forth on my rating for this because there were things about it that I really enjoyed and then there were others that kind of just lost me a little bit. But overall I did have a good time reading it so I think I'll end up with a 3.5 star rating for this one. Uh, it was really good. Uh, this is actually the first book in a series. I think there's like maybe five books or something out by now. I'm actually not sure that I will continue because I did like this but I was kind of happy with how it ended and I'm not sure I liked it enough to really want to continue but I don't know never say never I guess maybe at some point I will want to continue this but for now I think I'm just going to leave it as it is but yeah it was an enjoyable but also a very different uh, reading experience. The next prompt that I got was to read a big book and this is the book that I spent the most time on that I mentioned earlier in this video but that, that I didn't finish and that was Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. So I'm not going to talk about that book here because I haven't finished it. So that one will have to be included in my November wrap up. I am really enjoying it though. So um, yeah, but let's talk about it in November. And then the final prompt that I got for Bookish Bingo was to read the first book in the series. And for this prompt I read uh, Darius the Great is Not Okay by Adib Coram. This book is about a young guy. Um, I think he's like 17 or something. And he goes with his family to visit his grandparents in Iran. Darius's grandfather was recently diagnosed with a really serious illness. I can't remember what it was or if it was even mentioned exactly what it was, but basically he's only going to get worse and worse and he doesn't have that much time left. So it's decided that Darius and his family will go to visit his grandparents finally because Darius and his younger sister, they have never met. Their grandparents they've only chatted with them online on like video chats and stuff but they've never actually seen them in, in real life so it's decided that the family will go and visit them and while he's in Iran Darius meets a, a boy his own age called Sorab and they become best friends really quickly this book is kind of a like slow like quiet type of book there aren't that much going on in here uh, instead this book like talks about a variety of different topics. It definitely focuses on some various relationships that Darius has. Uh, it's obviously a lot about his friendship with Sorab. It also focuses a lot on Darius's relationship with his father because he has a rather complicated, difficult relationship with his father. So uh, there's a lot of focus on that. Darius, he also has depression and he's on medication for depression. So that is talked about a lot as well. So yeah, there's really just a lot about like family and different family dynamics and it's, a, and it's about like Darius discovering uh, the country that his grandparents and his mother is from for the first time. The setting is very vivid in this one and I always love that. I love when a book is set in a particular place and it actually feels like it's set during that place and not like anywhere else. I also wanted to mention that there's actually not a romance in this one. I feel like that's very typical YA, there's always a romance, uh, but not in this one. So that was actually really refreshing. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I ended up giving it uh, four stars and I would definitely recommend if this sounds good to you. So that was my bookish bingo. And then I also want to mention another book that I finished in October, uh, even though I read most of it before October. And that is, uh, Anna Karenina by Lev Tolstoy, which I've been reading for most of the year, I feel like. I don't even remember when I started it. I think it was maybe early spring or something. Um, so I finished it finally in October. I have been reading it very on and off. Uh, I've actually mostly been reading it during my lunch breaks while I've been working from home. And then there have been periods of time where I have just been taking a break from it because I needed to prioritize other books. And then there have been other periods of time where I have prioritized it more. Um, so yeah, it's been very on and off with my reading for this one, but I finally finished it in October. 
So, in case you don't know what this is about, um, it's basically about... I mean, we're following several different stories in here, but I feel like the main story is about a woman who ends up uh, leaving her husband and her child uh, to be with another man. And this book kind of left me feeling uh, kind of the same thing I often feel with classics. Like, just the feeling that I'm kind of not quite getting it, I guess. I mean, for one, this just felt way too long. I mean, for how long it was, like it's almost a thousand pages long. And for how long it was, there really wasn't that much going on in here. There were also parts of this that just felt really unnecessary. We get a lot of different characters' thoughts on a lot of different things that didn't really feel that important and I just really didn't care for it, I guess. So like, apparently I'm just not quite able to appreciate this kind of book. Like, I didn't like actively dislike this, but I also didn't particularly enjoy it. So yeah, like I said, I'm just left with the feeling that I didn't quite get this. I mean, I can definitely appreciate some of the topics that were discussed in here, but overall I just didn't really care that much, so... I mean, it's always difficult to rate books like this, uh, but I would probably just fall somewhere in the middle, like 2.5 to 3 stars, around there somewhere. So yeah, this was fine, but like I didn't particularly care, so... And then finally, in this wrap-up, I'm just going to quickly go through the rest of the books that I read for Smotherthon. The first one was Cabin Fever by Pandora Pine. This is a short paranormal romance novella. I ended up giving it two stars, it wasn't my favorite. Then I read The Ballerino and the Biker by Rebecca James. This one is a contemporary romance that I really enjoyed and gave four stars. Then I read Vanilla Clouds by Ro Horvath. This is also a contemporary romance. Uh, this is also kind of novella length, just over 100 pages. And I really enjoyed this one as well and gave it 4 stars. Then I read Trapped with a Vampire by M.M. Wilde. This is another paranormal romance novella. I gave this one 3 stars. And finally I read Special Delivery by Heidi Collinan. This is a contemporary romance, I guess. I ended up really enjoying this one a lot more than I expected to. Uh, I gave it 5 stars. This was just great. Like I said in my Smotherthon vlog, I don't necessarily think it will work for everyone, but it definitely worked for me. So so yeah, this was my favorite book that I read for Smotherthon and probably my favorite book of the entire month, actually. It was really good. So yeah, that's my wrap-up for October. Like I said, a bit of a mixed bag with definitely some highlights as well. And since I also really enjoy Assassin's Quest, which is the book that I spent the most time in October, uh, that is great. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, you can always hit like down below or you can subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos from me. But that's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon with another video. Bye!